the realm of God, you have to walk by faith and not by sight or not by appearances, not by feelings. So when it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So God demands faith of us. Mm -hmm. Without faith, it is impossible. You know, so God. many times we get, uh, well, all of our life, we learn to live by our senses. You know, yeah. as a child, as a baby, we learn to live by our senses. Walking, talking, mm -hmm. feeling, tasting, hearing, touching. Mm -hmm. And so to relearn, to learn that skill of living by to walk. faith, that means you got to hear the word, see the word, say the word, and your life begins to shift. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am a spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm living by the spirit and not just the natural. So there's two ways to live, by faith or by the natural. Uh, yeah, and so in the natural world, you you walk by your feelings or your mm -hmm. senses. If you don't do that to some degree, you're going to get hit by know. a truck. <laughs> so you do have to walk by your senses. But in the realm of God, mm -hmm. you have to walk by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight or not by appearances, not by feelings. So when it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so one translation says, without living by the unseen. Mm -hmm. Without faith is impossible to please God. Without living by the unseen. Mm -hmm. So God demands or requires faith of us. He's given us the means whereby we can get faith, which faith comes by the word of God, hearing and hearing the word. And so without living by the unseen, that we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm not moved by what I see, or I'm not moved by appearances. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved only by what I believe, and I believe God. So you're learning to shift from uh, the realm of sight, feeling, mm -hmm. tasting, that seeing, uh, to seeing and speaking the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, you know, in Mark 11, 23, he just maps it out. This is how it mm -hmm. works. Yeah. And he really connects you, connects the words yeah. and your spirit, your faith. Yeah. So Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, where we got the title for the book, mm -hmm. The Spirit of Faith, Paul says, we have the same we having the same spirit of faith, according to written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. Mm -hmm. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. So the fundamental ingredients in the spirit of faith is number one, is believing. I am a believer. Mm -hmm. I believe God. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So Paul said, I believe, but now I speak. So there's two main ingredients in the spirit of faith is believing and speaking that opens the door to the supernatural. Dad Hagen said something very good one time. He said, many people are looking for the spectacular right. and they miss the supernatural. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're looking for the miraculous, spectacular, mm -hmm. but they miss the supernatural. Mm -hmm. That believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural, and then you will have some spectacular things happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, Brother Hagen really brought to light the the truth that's contained in Mark eleven twenty three. Yeah, he got as a revelation, personal yeah. revelation. At, at 17 years old, that's yeah. just because I'd heard great preaching. My dad was a great preacher and many guest preachers, but for some reason, Dad Hagen was really not a preacher, he's more of a teacher. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I, at 17, I just listened to him. 
for some reason, I liked the way he would bring out the word. So even though he was a teacher, <clears throat> uh, I just listened to him teach the word. And so when he came to teaching on the subject of faith, I had heard what can happen if you believe. Right. If you have faith, man, mountains are moving, all kinds of things can happen, miracles happen when you dare to have faith in God. But no one had explained how faith works. How does it work? And so uh, if faith cannot be explained, then uh, God is unjust. And so that's why Jesus was not just a preacher, he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus would teach on the fundamentals and the principles mm -hmm. of faith. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, in Mark chapter six, where it says, he marveled at their unbelief, he could right. there do no mighty works. The very next verse it says, and he went about the cities and villages teaching. In other words, teaching is the source of faith, but teaching is also the cure for unbelief. That's so good. You know, teaching is the source of where faith comes because Jesus right. was a teacher. The apostle Paul was a teacher. So no doubt there were times of preaching and proclamation, mm -hmm. but fundamentally they were teaching. And so the explanation, so Paul and the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. explaining so simply and using illustrations yeah. from that day yeah. on how faith works. How faith works. And so when Dad Hagen taught on how faith works, mm -hmm. well, I was just a teenager and I was like, no, nah, nobody, I never heard it like that before. Right. And so I would listen to, not only listen to the messages, I would buy the, back in those days, the cassettes. Yeah. You had little cassette tapes. And uh, that was before, you know, my dad might have had some reel to reels and then they got the cassettes. So I would, I would buy as many of those as I could afford. I mean, I, I would spend more money on that than anything else I in my life. I think we still have some of those. And we still have boxes <laughs> of cassettes. And those messages then went to CDs, yep. and now those uh, messages are <laughs> in uh, digital it. form mm -hmm. on your iPhone. So I still listen to a lot of the fundamental teachings on faith. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> while Dad Hagen was teaching faith, then I would get the message, the cassette, because they actually used to run the message that night or that morning. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if he taught that morning, they'd take the master cassette, then there's a guy back at the tape table and uh, he would make copies of it. So right after the service, you could go back there and get you a copy of that message. Mm -hmm. And now we just, you preach and you can just and get it right on, on it live right stream. on your phone right away. <laughs> on live stream immediately and then watch it as much as you want. Yeah. Well, back in those days, you just had to get the cassette. So I had to work uh, for my dad. I worked uh, landscaping, which is like pulling weeds and mowing and uh, doing those kind of things. And then I worked... Uh, uh, painting. So he'd give me a job painting. So then I'd have to scrape uh, the old paint off the house and put on the new paint. And then, uh, so since I had, I could work by myself, then I had uh, the teaching of Dad Hagen going constantly mm -hmm. because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So I knew if I can receive this and understand this, then I can get anywhere I need to go if I can understand how faith works. Because faith is what pleases God, mm -hmm. and you cannot please God and not know it. <laughs> He's <laughs> because a rewarder. He is a rewarder right. of those who diligently, diligently seek, seek him. him. And so to seek him, you have to spend time in his word. Amen. To seek him. Yeah. So God is a faith God. When we say that, that means he is fundamentally <clears throat> uh, pleased by responds to his faith. Word, his faith, yeah. Even all that he's done for us in Christ, he is still looking for somebody that will believe it. Amen. And receive it. And I remember as a child, I was raised in a wonderful home. Dad and mom, just exemplary, wonderful examples of, of living for God. And we had faith as far mm -hmm. as we knew. Yeah. And uh, of course we knew what the Bible says about salvation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and everything, and we just did everything that we knew. And then there came a point where we said, Lord, we're hungry for more. And you know, mm. whenever you say, God, I'm hungry for more, mm. he hears you. And, and at our door mm -hmm. came a, a young fellow. He had been to a full gospel business meeting. Mm. 
and, and had a box of Brother Hagen's yeah. cassette tapes <clears throat> and books. Our family started reading those and, and listening to the tapes. And it was like, oh, this is how faith works. Mm. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, so simple. Yeah. Why did we not see that? But the Holy Spirit was bringing revelation to our family, and it yeah. changed us. Well, the most important thing in mm -hmm. the world is revelation knowledge mm -hmm. of the Word of God. That's the entrance and the teaching of His yeah. Word yeah. gives you light mm -hmm. and to walk in that light. And the Bible says uh, God Himself is in that light. Whoa. Oh, so I it like says, that. Uh, well, 1 John 1, 7 says, yeah. if we walk in the light, the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. All sin. So when you walk in the light of the Word and the light of love and the light of His presence, and in that light, He is in that light. Mm -hmm. And He says, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And uh, one translation says, from sin in all its forms and manifestations. Mm -hmm. And so Smith Wigglesworth said, there's not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. So the more you learn about the blood, the more knowledge you have about the blood, the light. you have more faith. That's the revelation the knowledge. Yeah. And that's what you speak. To Instead have faith of saying, in God. I'm a terrible person. I'm a sinner. You know, I'm never going to make it. Mm -hmm. I plead the blood. You learn to have faith in the blood. Yeah, I have faith in the blood. So the, the light of his word. Mm -hmm. So to have faith in God. And then Romans 3.25 says to have faith in the blood of Jesus. So to have faith in God, have faith in the blood of Jesus. And also we're told to have faith in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's a, a whole new territory that mm -hmm. you would go into the moment the fundamentals of faith are learned. So now go from 2 Corinthians 4.13, I yeah. believe and I speak. Okay. Go to Mark 11.22 and 23. Mm -hmm. And it seems like I just can never get uh, too much of this teaching because that was very fundamental to me when I was 17. And so at 17, when Dad Hagen taught on faith, yeah. uh, he used Mark 11, 22, 23, 24 a lot. Some people actually think he wrote Mark 11, 23, <laughs> <laughs> but actually Jesus said yeah, Mark they, 11, 22. They say, oh, that faith teaching, that Name uh, yeah. and claim it. Uh, yeah, they want to blame Kenneth Hagin. Or <laughs> Kenneth Hagin, blame no. Blame Kenneth Copeland or something. Go read Jesus' words. <laughs> they call it Copeland Hagin. <laughs> but if you take Brother Copeland, <laughs> you take Brother Hagin. And, and, uh, but here's what Jesus said on the subject. And Dad Hagin and Brother and Copeland, they just teach on the subject. It's not only in this book, it's in other Gospels. Yeah, if you're going to teach on faith, you cannot teach on faith without using Mark 11, 22 and 23. That's right. Because that's Jesus' teaching and the most powerful things that he said on the subject of faith. And so Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, so you could turn there. And um, Jesus said, Mark 11, 22, to have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. In other words, why would Jesus encourage people to have faith in God? Because Hebrews eleven six says that God is a faith God. That's mm -hmm. what pleases Him. Mm -hmm. That's what He responds to, mm -hmm. and that's what enables you to receive from God. And that's how you're saved. Mm -hmm. That by grace are you saved through faith. faith. In other words, your faith accesses the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And so here He says, "Have faith in God." And then some of those translations in Mark eleven twenty two says. Have the faith of God. Well, this is or the have faith, God's faith of God because it actually comes from the Word of God. Mm. So it really is God's faith. So I, I like to say the Word of God, <laughs> the Word of God came out of God's mouth. Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when mm -hmm. I saw that, he said the Word of God comes out of God's mouth. Mm not out of God's pen. Mm. So here's the way the Lord said to me. He said, the word of God came out of God's mouth that it was spoken before it was written. And then it was written so it could be spoken. Wow. In other words, the word of God is a spoken thing, mm -hmm. came out of God's mouth. And so when you receive the word, I call that mouth to mouth resuscitation. In other words, when you're fainting or collapsing, you take the Word of God, put it in your mouth, mm -hmm. and you breathe in the life of God. 
so the mouth, and we started out talking, you know, about our senses versus faith, walking by faith, and how faith is, mm. in, uh, speaking is involved with faith. Yeah. So the fundamental thing is the Word of God come out of God's mouth. Mouth. And then how do you get the mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? It's just when you take God's Word, put it in your mouth, that it is a spoken thing. Mm -hmm. And so here's the way Reinhard Bonnke said it many years ago. Yeah. Um, and Reinhard Bonnke said, my whole life changed, my whole ministry changed when the Lord said this to me. My Word in your mouth is just as powerful as my Word in my mouth. Wow. In other words, he said, I was preaching the gospel. I'm preaching in Africa. And he really had a tremendous ministry. He's mm. with the Lord now. But Reinhard Bonnke said that was a turning point in his life when the Lord said to him, my word in your mouth is just as powerful as my word in my mouth. So when you speak the word of God, actually, you could really look at uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joshua, each one of them, that anytime God wants to change someone's life, he always touches their mouth, mouth. Mm -hmm. or puts his word in their mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah, he said, my word is in your mouth. Isaiah said, he touched my mouth. And they said, who, who will go for us? And I said, I'm ready to go now. Right. And so then Joshua, he said, my word shall be in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So anytime God wants to change someone's life, he puts the word in their mm -hmm. mouth. All right. So now why is that such a significant thing? Right. Well, look at verse 23 when Jesus said to have faith in God, mm -hmm. have the faith of God or faith the God, God kind of faith. Right. Or one of my favorite translations says lay hold on God's faithfulness. faithfulness. So that's what your faith responds to God's faithfulness. So in verse 23, uh, Jesus could have said, uh, have faith in God. In verse 23, he could have said, you figure it out. <laughs> that would have been rough because you knew that that faith pleases God and you would know what could happen if you had faith. And then Jesus refused to explain it. Yeah. So Jesus not only explained it, he actually gave the example right. of how faith works. And right. in this case, he's talking about the authority of the believer. The believer has authority. In other words, you're not just a victim of whatever's going on around you. Well, most, you have authority. Most religion, you know, a lot of the religions of the world and the Christianity even uh, embrace the, the thought that Christians are just, you know, a saved worm, you know, yeah. and always under condemnation. God's going to get mm -hmm. you for that. and. Confess all your faults. Just say everything just, bad you've done. Just focus on that. And, and who are you to ask God to do anything? Let it be thy will. Whatever you want, Lord. Mm. We do want that. But there's certain times when God's given his authority yeah. to us that we have to use it. So the authority of the believer. Yeah. Jesus said, this is, how this is how faith works. Now, we've seen where faith comes from, and this is how faith works. That Jesus said, verily I say unto you, so I'm telling you the truth, that whosoever shall say. Whosoever. Shall say. What do you say? Anybody can do this. Whosoever shall say. So the first thing Jesus said about faith is really the saying part. Mm-hmm. The authority of the believer is so the same part. So you should underline same. And so he mentions the <laughs> same part three times, the believing part only once. I yeah. learned that from Dad Hagen, and he learned that from, from the Lord. The Lord showed it to him while he was praying. I, we probably wouldn't have never noticed it. He said, <laughs> but he's praying. The Lord pointed out to him. It's amazing how many things you can read and not really, not really see the details. But here in the King James Version, he said, and that's what Dad Hagen was using, and so uh, mm -hmm. it's what we learn. Yeah. And we compare other translations, but we use this one first usually all the time. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So he shall have whatsoever he saith. Say it. Say it. So this is how Jesus functioned on the earth for three years. Because Jesus authority. had laid aside his deity mm -hmm. powers, it yeah. says in Philippians. So Jesus actually had to function 
just like you and I function, and that is with the God kind of faith. Wow. And so Jesus had to use this authority. So the Lord said it to me this way one time. He said, the authority of the believer is not just available, it is necessary. necessary. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's not just telling you, well, this is available, you know, if you would like to consider it. He's just saying, this authority is necessary for you to receive from God, do the will of God. In other words, he said, you say to this mountain. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said to me, if it's God's will for the mountain to be there, he wouldn't have told you to move it. <laughs> so he's telling you to move that he's mountain. He's saying to move and it. And so there must be something on the other side of that mountain yes. that belongs to you. And there must be a reason why Satan or the enemy has thrown that mountain in right. your way. Mm -hmm. so, that a hindrance or it could be a challenge, right. a problem that you're facing that may seem way too big for you. So there's some songs that says, Lord, just help me carry this mountain. Help me, you know. Climb this mountain. Climb it and just, you know, carry well, in my this burdens, case, you know. <laughs> in this case, the mountain. But the Lord says, no, I don't want you just to carry it. I want you to talk to it and move it. Yeah, in this case, the mountain represents yeah. uh, um, hindrances. Mm -hmm. Or it could represent anything the enemy or Satan, devils, demons, evil spirits, strategies, schemes of the enemy. And if you don't exercise your authority, God is not going to do it for you. So he said, you will have what you say. So that means yeah. you as an individual, or the Lord said it to me this way, your mountain needs to hear mm -hmm. your voice. It's good. <laughs> In other words, not your pastor's voice. You need to hear your pastor's voice. You need to hear the minister's voice. Uh, and it'll build your faith. But your mountain needs to hear your voice. And so again, uh, dealing with strategies of Satan, that mm -hmm. there's no such thing as unchallenged faith. That means the enemy's going to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, that he can in your path yeah. to try to hinder you from yeah. receiving from God or from doing the will of God or going forward in the plan of God. Mm -hmm. And so um, God would not design a plan for your life mm -hmm. that did not require faith because mm -hmm. he's a faith God. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to literally go from faith to faith to go from victory to victory. You're watching Mark Hankins' ministry, Faith for Every Nation. In Mark chapter 9, 23, Jesus says, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The cure for unbelief is the teaching of the Word of God. The good news is when you hear the Word of God, your faith can grow and nothing is impossible. Nothing is incurable. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's Word. Watch the mountains in your life move and overcome the challenges you're facing. Your confession of faith brings you into the consciousness of who you are in Christ. In this three CD set, Nothing is Incurable, Mark Hankins has three messages that will strengthen your faith. How to appropriately receive God's word, unbelief is curable, restoration to fellowship. These three messages can also be downloaded on the Mark Hankins Ministry app for free. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. For your offering of any amount, you will also receive Mark's book, The Spirit of Faith. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. The Spirit of Faith takes the victim out of your voice and puts victory in your voice. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and to be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your offering will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also help us serve as our new television studio. When you sow into someone's need, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dream, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a three CD set, Nothing is Incurable, and the Spirit of Faith book. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. 
Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were blessed by the message that you received. My parents have been going all around the world preaching the gospel. It is their heart and their passion and they're honored to do it. They want to get this gift to you, the Spirit of Faith book for your gift of any amount. They want to get this into your hands. So for you to do that, you can call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. Have a blessed day. Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.